Prison is often portrayed as a place where creativity and inventiveness die. But for those within its walls, necessity is truly the mother of invention. Here we explore the clandestine world of improvised weaponry, a testament to human ingenuity under extreme conditions. These weapons, crafted from unlikely materials, represent desperate attempts at survival and sometimes a daring bid for freedom. Number 1. Shank City For a convict, the term shank transcends its dictionary definition. It is no longer just a mass of metal. It symbolizes power, control, and above all, survival in the harsh world of incarceration. The shank, a rudimentary knife or stabbing weapon, is alarmingly common in correctional facilities worldwide. It's a chilling testament to inmate ingenuity, molded from the most mundane and accessible objects available within the prison walls. The creation of a shank is a clandestine operation, a covert act of rebellion against the control exerted by prison authorities. They're typically crafted from materials that would usually be innocuous, spoons, toothbrushes, or pieces of metal scrapped from prison infrastructure. Even when prison officials introduce plastic cutlery and razors to limit potential weapon-making materials, inmates prove their resilience and creativity. Spoons, often smuggled from the cafeteria, are gradually and painstakingly sharpened against concrete walls or floors, slowly but surely transforming into a potentially lethal blade. Toothbrushes follow a similar trajectory. Their handles are filed down against rough surfaces, creating a pointed end capable of causing serious harm. The more sophisticated shanks, however, are crafted from scrap metal or wire, sourced from various places like the workshop, the fence, or even the bed frame. These materials undergo a labor-intensive transformation, sometimes being heated using makeshift prison stoves, constructed from tin cans and tea lights, and then shaped and sharpened into a blade. The final product is then often wrapped in cloth or tape at one end, creating a makeshift handle and giving the weapon a deceptively professional appearance. Shanks, however, are not only tools of violence, but also symbols of status and power within the hierarchical society of a prison. Their possession is a sign of strength, offering protection against potential threats and, in some cases, an avenue to wield control over others. Furthermore, they have been associated with some daring escape attempts, proving their utility beyond interpersonal conflicts. One notorious example of shank use occurred during the infamous 1987 Atlanta Penitentiary siege in the United States, where Cuban detainees, wielding an array of shanks, took over the facility for 11 days, highlighting the potential of these seemingly crude weapons. Despite the sinister connotations, the prevalence of shanks within prisons is a stark symbol of the adaptability and resourcefulness of the human spirit, albeit in a grim and dangerous context. It portrays a reality where the line between survival and peril is as thin as the blade of a shank, serving as a chilling reminder of the lengths to which individuals can go when backed into a corner. Number 2. The Zip Gun Revolution Prisons and guns seem like a catastrophic mix, yet inmates have displayed remarkable innovation in constructing homemade firearms, or zip guns. Zip guns highlight the dangerous crossroads of resourcefulness and desperation, turning everyday objects into tools of lethal force. The basic principle behind a zip gun is simple. You need a chamber for the ammunition and a method for igniting it. Despite their rudimentary design, these weapons can be incredibly dangerous and unpredictable. A common source for the barrel is metal pipes or tubes often scavenged from infrastructure or broken equipment. The ammunition could be a rudimentary projectile a metal piece, a stone, or even tightly folded paper. The ignition method is where the real inventiveness comes in, with inmates using everything from rubber bands and springs for a mechanical impact to matches and electric wires for a heat ignition. One infamous zip gun was created by an inmate from a metal tube and a broken light bulb. The bulb acted as an igniter when connected to a power source, while the tube served as a barrel for a makeshift projectile. Number 3. The Toothbrush Razor Hybrid For an incarcerated individual, even a mundane item like a toothbrush can become a tool for survival. The Toothbrush Razor Hybrid is a weapon of terrifying simplicity, turning a tool for personal hygiene into a potential killing device. The process of creating a Toothbrush Razor Hybrid is disarmingly straightforward. An inmate would take a standard-issue toothbrush and embed a razor blade at one end of it, 
usually by melting the plastic around the blade to secure it in place. The result is a weapon that's easily concealable and eerily effective. The plastic handle of the toothbrush offers a firm grip, while the razor blade, although small, can inflict serious wounds, especially if aimed at the face or neck. The toothbrush razor hybrid is a chilling testament to the lengths inmates will go to arm themselves, reflecting the harsh reality of life behind bars, where even objects associated with cleanliness and health can be transformed into tools of violence. Number 4. Molotov Cocktails – Fire Within Walls Fire is a powerful symbol of rebellion and destruction. Inside prison walls, this concept takes a tangible and terrifying form, the Molotov Cocktail. It may sound inconceivable that such a weapon could be constructed in prison, but the resourcefulness of inmates knows no bounds. A Molotov cocktail is essentially a homemade incendiary device. It consists of a bottle filled with a flammable substance, usually alcohol or petrol, and a cloth wick that's ignited before being hurled at a target. The bottle shatters upon impact, causing the flammable contents to spread and ignite a large area. In a prison setting, where obtaining alcohol or petrol might be difficult, inmates improvise. The flammable substance can be anything from stolen cleaning fluids to fermented fruit from the kitchen. Bottles can be obtained from various sources, discarded medicine bottles, soft drink bottles from vending machines, or even carefully crafted from melted and reformed plastic. The wick is generally torn cloth from bedsheets or clothing, soaked in the same flammable substance. The ignition source is typically a lighter or matches, smuggled in or obtained from various sources within the prison. Number 5. The Crossbow – The Inmate's Ballista Sometimes the weapons crafted by inmates aren't just formidable, they're a marvel of makeshift engineering. A prime example is the homemade crossbow. A mechanism of ancient warfare brought to life within prison walls, this weapon is a testament to the ingenuity of its creators. The creation of a crossbow requires a significant amount of materials and time, not to mention a high level of craftsmanship. The body or stock of the crossbow is typically constructed from strong, rigid materials like broken furniture, bed slats, or pieces of metal. The bow, or the part that launches the projectile, is often made from tightly rolled or folded paper, or even pieces of flexible metal. The firing mechanism is a masterpiece of prison engineering, typically involving a string made from unraveled rope or torn bed sheets, along with a trigger system crafted from pieces of wood or metal. Despite the painstaking effort required to create a crossbow, there have been instances of such weapons being discovered in prisons. This highlights the persistence and inventiveness of inmates who take the art of weapon making to new and surprising heights. Number 6. Radio Heater Hot Plate Weapon Electricity, a fundamental part of modern life, can become an unsuspected weapon in the hands of prison inmates. A prime example is the Hot Plate Weapon, ingeniously created from radio heaters. This weapon represents a unique fusion of resourcefulness and technical understanding, manifesting the dangerous potential of seemingly harmless objects. The radio heater weapon is essentially an electrical weapon, developed by rewiring the internals of a standard prison-issued radio. The radio's heating element is modified to generate substantial heat, turning it into a kind of makeshift electric stove or hot plate. This hot plate, when concealed and used correctly, can cause severe burns, becoming a deterrent or a weapon in conflicts. Constructing a radio heater weapon is a risky endeavor, requiring a careful understanding of the radio's internal workings and a stealthy approach to avoid detection by prison authorities. Despite the inherent dangers, instances of these weapons highlight the lengths inmates will go to ensure their safety and assert their dominance. Number 7. The Chuko – Cloth and Soap Creation Sometimes the most effective weapons are the simplest, requiring minimal resources and craftsmanship. The chuko, a weapon fashioned from cloth and soap, is one such device. Originating in Spanish-speaking prisons, the term chuko is slang for a homemade knife or shank, but in this context it refers to a specific variant crafted from everyday materials. To create a chuko, an inmate starts by selecting a bar of soap, around which a cloth is tightly wrapped. This bundle is then soaked in water and left to harden. The result is a surprisingly hard and weighty weapon, which, when swung with enough force, can cause serious harm. 
The Chuko epitomizes the inventive adaptability of inmates, turning the most innocuous items into formidable weapons. It's a stark reminder of the reality within prison walls, where even the most mundane objects can carry a lethal potential. Number 8. The Bedpost Club The Bedpost Club, as the name implies, is a crude yet effective weapon made from a bedpost or any sturdy piece of wood found within prison confines. In the complex arsenal of improvised prison weapons, it stands out for its straightforward construction and brutal efficiency. Breaking off a piece of bedpost or any other wooden furniture within a cell requires strength and determination. Once achieved, the result is a formidable bludgeoning tool, capable of delivering powerful blows. Though not as subtle or easily concealed as other weapons, the bedpost club is a testament to the raw, uncomplicated nature of violence behind bars. The bedpost club is also a stark reminder of the grim reality of prison life. It is a weapon born of desperation, and the need for self-protection, highlighting the inherent dangers faced by inmates on a daily basis. Number 9. The Glass Shard Knife Glass, in its intact form, is often a rare sight within prison walls due to its potential for misuse. However, on the rare occasions when glass does find its way into a cell, it can become the basis for one of the most deadly weapons in the prison arsenal, the Glass Shard Knife. Creating a glass shard knife is as straightforward as it sounds. An inmate who manages to acquire a piece of glass simply needs to shatter it, carefully selecting a fragment with one sharp edge. The non-sharp end is often wrapped with cloth or paper to form a rudimentary handle, and the weapon is ready. The glass shard knife is a weapon of deadly precision. Unlike other improvised weapons, which rely on brute force or shock value, the glass shard knife is made for stealth and subtlety. Its razor-sharp edge can inflict deep cuts and puncture wounds, making it a feared tool within the prison ecosystem. The existence of such a weapon highlights the lengths inmates will go to arm themselves, often risking personal safety in the process. The glass shard knife is a chilling manifestation of this reality, reflecting the harsh, dangerous world behind prison walls. Number 10. The Rock Hammer The Rock Hammer, though not a weapon in the traditional sense, has earned its place in the annals of prison lore due to its association with escape attempts. It's a symbol of patience and resolve, a tool of quiet defiance, and a potential path to freedom. Creating a rock hammer involves finding a sturdy, pointed piece of metal, which can be as varied as a piece of bed frame, a broken piece of machinery, or a nail. The metal is then attached to a handle, often made from a piece of wood, and secured with string or tape. The use of a rock hammer is a slow and painstaking process. The inmate has to chisel away at walls, floors, or bars, little by little, often under the cover of darkness or during times of minimal supervision. The rock hammer is then carefully concealed to avoid detection. The most infamous example of a rock hammer in prison history is the one used by three inmates during the 1962 Alcatraz escape, one of the most famous prison breaks in history. This showcases the rock hammer not just as a potential weapon, but a symbol of ingenuity and the indomitable human spirit. Number 11. The Gasper, a silent killer. The Gasper, or Garot, stands apart in the catalog of improvised prison weapons due to its sinister function. It's a weapon of stealth and precision, designed for quiet, close-quarters attacks. Its very name derived from its horrifying ability to gasp the life out of its victims. Crafting a gasper involves creating a strong, thin cord, usually by unraveling clothing or bedsheets. Some inmates have even been known to use dental floss, braiding strands together to create a stronger cord. The ends of this cord are then attached to handles, often made from pieces of wood or plastic. The gasper is a chilling testament to the lethal inventiveness that the prison environment can foster. Its existence also highlights the ever-present threat of violence that inmates face, a reminder of the silent dangers that can lurk in the shadows of prison life. Number 12. The Paper Mache Dagger Paper, often considered harmless, can be transformed into a lethal weapon in the confines of a prison. The Paper Mache Dagger represents one such transformation, embodying an ingenious blend of stealth, simplicity, and surprise. To construct a paper mache dagger, an inmate would begin by collecting paper, which can be from books, newspapers, or even toilet paper. The paper is then soaked in water until it becomes a pulp. This pulp is carefully molded into the shape of a blade, then left to dry and harden. 
Some inmates further strengthen the blade by coating it with melted plastic or toothpaste, giving it a hardened exterior. The paper mache dagger is a deceptive weapon, easily overlooked due to its unassuming appearance. But in the right hands, it can be a deadly surprise. Its construction requires patience and ingenuity, reflecting the resourcefulness inmates often develop in response to their constrained environment. Number 13. The Lighter Flamethrower Fire, one of humanity's oldest tools, retains its primal potency in the prison context. The lighter flamethrower, a terrifying weapon forged from an everyday object, stands as a stark testament to this fact. Constructing a lighter flamethrower involves modifying a regular lighter to increase the flame size or even to expel a stream of flammable liquid. This could be as simple as adjusting the lighter's fuel flow or attaching a makeshift reservoir of stolen or homemade alcohol. The result is a device that can project fire over a short distance, creating a shock factor and causing potential burns. It's a weapon that commands respect and fear, adding another layer of complexity to the already volatile prison environment. The lighter flamethrower is a grim reminder of the creative lengths inmates can go to for self-protection or dominance, turning the mundane into the menacing with unsettling ease. Number 14. The Broken Dinner Tray Shield while many improvised prison weapons focus on offense, it's important to consider the flip side of the coin, defense. The broken dinner tray shield is one such innovation. In a world where danger is always imminent, even a mealtime accessory can be transformed into a life-saving device. The construction of a broken dinner tray shield is less complex than some of the other weapons detailed in this list. An inmate simply needs to obtain a sturdy dinner tray, typically made of hard plastic or metal, and break it down to a manageable size. The edges of the shield can be sharpened to add offensive capabilities, but its primary purpose remains defense. However, don't let its simplicity fool you. The dinner tray shield can be crucial in a prison fight, providing a barrier between an inmate and an attacker. It can be used to deflect blows from a variety of weapons, reducing the risk of injury. Its size and rigidity can also make it an effective tool for crowd control, providing a barrier that can keep opponents at bay. The existence of the broken dinner tray shield is a testament to the dangers that permeate prison life. Every object, even those as mundane as a dinner tray, carries the potential to be repurposed into a tool for survival. It highlights the defensive tactics inmates have to resort to and the ever-present need for protection within the prison walls. The dinner tray shield is not just a makeshift shield. It's a symbolic representation of the constant battle for survival that defines life in prison. Inmates must adapt to their surroundings and utilize whatever resources they have at their disposal to protect themselves. The broken dinner tray shield is a physical manifestation of this adaptation, a crude yet effective barrier against the harsh realities of prison violence. What's perhaps most remarkable about the dinner tray shield is the resourcefulness it represents. With limited materials and under constant scrutiny, inmates manage to craft a defensive tool that serves its purpose and withstands the rigors of prison life. This weapon-turned-shield is a testament to the human capacity for adaptability and resilience, even in the most unforgiving circumstances. The broken dinner tray shield is a reminder that in the world of prison, nothing is as it seems. What is a simple tool for serving food in one context can become a crucial lifeline in another. This weapon-turned defensive tool represents the complexities of prison life and the creativity that emerges from necessity. Number 15. The Knuckle Duster In the challenging environment of a prison, fists often become the first line of defense and attack. But even a punch can be amplified, transformed into a more potent weapon. This is where the improvised knuckle duster comes into play, a unique invention that can turn a bare-handed brawl into a devastating display of force. Creating a knuckle duster in prison requires an intuitive understanding of the physics of a punch and the ability to source and manipulate materials. The essential ingredient for a knuckle duster is a hard, durable substance that can be shaped to fit around the knuckles and increase the impact force of a punch. It's a task that demands creativity, resourcefulness, and stealth. The materials used to create a knuckle duster vary based on what's available. It can be as simple as tightly wrapping a roll of coins in cloth or duct tape, giving the fist added weight and hardness. 
Some inmates have been known to craft more complex versions from melted and reshaped toothbrushes or spoons, or even from pieces of metal scavenged from around the prison. Creating a knuckle duster is not just about crafting a weapon, it's about enhancing the human body's natural capabilities. The principle behind a knuckle duster is to distribute the force of a punch over a smaller, harder area, thus increasing the impact. It's a weapon that doesn't just hurt. It can break bones and cause serious injury. However, creating and carrying a knuckle duster also poses significant risks. The process of crafting one requires time and exposes the inmate to the chance of detection. Possessing a knuckle duster can lead to severe punishments if discovered, including solitary confinement and extended sentences. Yet the existence of such weapons within prison walls underlines the stark reality of prison life. The need for self-defense can outweigh the fear of punishment. Despite these risks, the knuckle duster remains a staple in the arsenal of prison-made weapons. It's a testament to the resilience and inventiveness of inmates who, faced with dangerous environments and limited resources, find ways to enhance their defensive and offensive capabilities. The knuckle duster's construction and use reflect a broader theme that resonates throughout prison culture, the necessity of power and control. In a world where physical force often determines survival, a knuckle duster can tip the balance in favor of its user, making it a highly sought-after tool. The knuckle duster serves as a tangible example of how the confines and pressures of prison life can drive inmates to extraordinary levels of ingenuity and resourcefulness. It's a powerful symbol of the lengths people will go to ensure their safety. A makeshift weapon that carries both practical and symbolic weight within prison walls.